capable of drilling 12 feet into the rock. But what is special about this one is as we operate it, the water continually shoots up the hollow drill bit. So yes, it means we're showered in mud for the eight hours of work, but the water was introduced very importantly to damp down that deadly dust. But at this stage, everybody, we still have to use the widow maker for all horizontal drilling. So we did not get to grips with the dust problem until 1930. And to be very honest with you, the dust was always a major issue for the people that lived and worked here. So let's move on up to 1930, and this is where it gets exciting. In 1930, we see the arrival of the jack leg. Just like the stove my friends, it's a wet drill. As we operate it, that water continually shoots up the drill bit to protect the lungs from the dust. Again, it can drill 12 feet into the rock. It's got a pneumatic leg, which makes it easier for us to manoeuvre while we're drilling. And as you can clearly see, it weighs considerably less than the Widowmaker, so much easier to transport around the mine. I'm gonna run this machine and show you how it works. Awesome. It will be loud. Nice. Nice. All you have to do is cover your ears with the flats of your hands and I will take care of the rest. <laughs> Here we go. They can be working with these in all kinds of areas and multiple machines being run at one time. And no hearing protection whatsoever or protection this from that deadly dust other than the water. Okay? So trust me when I tell you folks, that is not easy to do. It takes a lot of physical strength. Your whole body vibrates the entire time you operate it. And of course, I'm not drilling anything. That hole's been there for an incredibly long time. So for the miners that worked with them here for eight hours in a shift, and for the men that work with them today underground for up to 12 hours, I have a huge amount of respect and admiration for them. Yeah. It's not easy machinery to operate, and mining is still no easy job. Mm -hmm. But incredibly, the jack leg and the stopper, they're still used underground today. So when we arrive down here for work as drillers, we're always looking for this big yellow outline. It's called the miner's bullseye. Geologists here, they've studied the rock samples, and this is how they tell us this is where we want you to drill and blast to get the copper. I drill 35 holes into the bullseye. Each of those holes is 12 foot deep. In 1904, that took eight hours to do. We then load some of the holes with dynamite and we plug them with clay. At the end of the shift, when everyone was out of the mine and accounted for, the detonations occur. And if we've done a good job down here, everybody, it's going to blast this rock out and it will blow out in manageable sized pieces. So basically, at the end of the first eight hours of serious hard work, all you'd be left with is a great big pile of rock. The miners called it muck, and the muckers did a very different job down here. And I'm going to walk you all through to the mucking chamber, and with that young man's help, I'm going to show you what happens next. Sweet. Any questions? Everybody's good? Perfect. Okay, let's go see what happens next. Good job, crew. Buddy. Perfect. And so I'm going to get you to go all the way down behind the yellow barriers and everybody else. Thank you. Good job, Dad. Thank you, Ty. No worry. Thank you. I feel tall. <laughs> okay, everybody, John and I need your help. 
On three, I would like everybody here to yell out boom, and that includes you too, John, okay? okay. Here we go, everybody. One, two, three, boom! boom. The dynamite's gone off. We waited for that deadly dust to settle. This is our big pile of muck. It is the job of the muckers to get the rocks into ore carts so we can transport it to the mill for processing. Here in Britannia, the muckers always worked in pairs, and this is where my new best friend John comes in. So John and I are down here to start our eight-hour shift of work. This is the ingenious piece of machinery we had to work with. John, what would you call this? A small shot, a spade almost? Yeah, shot, but we called it a muck stick. A muck Watch stick. me very carefully, young man. So for eight long hours down here, my friends, these two men are shoveling extremely heavy rocks over their shoulders and in to the ore carts. Take it away, John, do exactly as I did. Shovel the muck. Remember, I'm just pretending. Show me your to pretend. Show me your technique. Oh, beautiful. Just keep doing that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the company that owned this mine expected these two men to move 16 tons of rock in one eight hour shift. That is the equivalent of 10 Honda Civic cars worth of rock. This was a back breaking job. And some of you here are old enough to know that, keep going John, keep going. Some of you here are old enough to know that very famous song, 16 tons and what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. Most definitely written about muckers. In real life, I could not have been a mucker. It's not because I'm lazy, it's because I am a woman. There were never any women underground here throughout this mine 70 years of operation. And there are two reasons for it. Number one, and I say it's the most important reason, we were far too smart to be doing this job in the first place. And number two, it was considered very unlucky by miners to have women underground. They were very superstitious. And down here, we were very bad luck indeed. And I don't know about the rest of you ladies, but that suits me just fine. Let's give John a big round of applause. Good job, buddy. You might be the best mucker I've had all year. That's brilliant. Wow. Thank you very much, John. Go back and join the crew. The At the end, I'll let you know how much you got paid for your eight-hour shift of work. <laughs> so they, they... Relax. Oh, okay. So how many tons? 16 tons. 16 tons. Wow. In eight hours. Jeez. Oh. John, hang on a minute. Say what say that. Just to put it in perspective. Imagine throwing that over your shoulder for eight hours with a mask. So this rock, my friends, is extremely heavy. Do you want to see? It's very dense and very heavy. But it would have been ripped. They would have been ripped. There was no obesity back in those days, my friend. Very dense, heavy, heavy. Would they like that? I thought it'd be. Two hands. Yeah, two hands. But the weight is the same. It's very dense, very heavy. Awesome. 5,000 calories, 6,000 calories, and burn it right off. Now, in 1920, my friends, we saw the arrival of the mucking machine. This machine runs on compressed air just like the drills. This machine can move 16 to 20 tons of rock hourly. So it really increased productivity, efficiency, and it certainly made the muckers' lives much easier. This does not put men out of work. The mucking machine can only run on the track, so mucking is still a two-man job. We still have to have one guy with a muck stick shoveling the rock in all the right place for this to come along and scoop it up. You're going to be very excited to hear I'm going to drive it for you and show you how it works. Yeah. Once again, it's a little loud. If you'd like to cover your ears, do, but it's not as bad as the drill. And don't be worried, my aim is always perfect on Thursdays. <laughs> Uh -huh. Trust me, John, that is way better than the muck stick buggy. So a great, great, great invention that increased productivity and efficiency in this mine and many others this machine really changed the face of mining forever. So we've seen how the miners worked. With John's expert help, we've seen how the muckers worked. Now I'm gonna show each of you the horrific conditions these men worked in. Please follow me, everybody. It just 16 tons to an This machine can do way more than 16 tons, darling. Oh. It can do 16 to 20 tons every hour. Oh. 
No. Where was the only place to have a light? Good lass, the explosives magazine. The reason we don't have lights underground, everybody, every time we blast, we blow them all out. So I'm going to kill these lights to show you how incredibly dark it is down here. I would like you to look this way. I guarantee you, you will not see your hand in front of your face. This really makes you appreciate the conditions these men had to work in. Do not be worried, it'll just be for a few seconds and then my headlight will be coming on. Everybody, hold out your hand. This is the only magic trick I know. <laughs> Imagine doing all that work I've shown you in this. Whoa. Look at that, everybody. Whoa, it's pitch darkness. Pitch black. That is black. So how did they do Whoa. it? What the heck? In 1904, this is the only light we had to work by. Can you possibly imagine doing all the drilling, the mucking, the explosives? And for many years, candlelight was it. Mining can be a dangerous job, but when you're doing it by candlelight, even more so. And the very sad thing is, there are still many men and children in third world countries today mining yeah. Yeah. underground by candlelight. In 1919, we saw the arrival of the calcium carbide lamp. In the bottom of this lamp is a man-made substance called calcium carbide. Today, it is most definitely a controlled substance. To that, I've just added tap water. Now, if we're very lucky, a chemical reaction happens and it produces acetylene gas. And we use that today, my friends, in blow torches. Ooh. Voila. Oh. Now miners wore these on cloth flat caps, fire cloth. How would you feel about that? Oh. But yeah. as you can clearly see, compared to the candle, this is a way better light for working down here. This little lamp will burn for four hours.